after a few days of talking about it, the Fed finally has came in with their comments and what they plan on doing here and how it's going to go ahead and affect your interest rates concerning your mortgage coming up right after this. Hi there, and welcome back after the break, everyone. Mike Peters here, your star realtor, star and the Treasure Valley, back with another episode of Mikey's monthly mortgage review for you for the month of uh, May of 2020. And today is actually a very significant day because the Fed had came in after a couple of days of talking about it and really kind of came out with a different stance on how to combat inflation uh, concerning the uh, federal funds rate and how we're going to go ahead and piece together in this video how the federal funds rate really kind of applies uh, to how this can really kind of rack out the interest rates and what to expect coming up for the rest of the year here in 2022. So let's go ahead, let's dive into that information. Okay, well, the Federal Reserve did today approve a rare half percent point interest rate increase, uh, making the largest increase since May of 2000, and announced plans to also shrink its $9 trillion asset portfolio starting next month in June in a double-barreled effort to reduce inflation that is running at a four-decade high. We all know inflation is high. You see it at the gas station, you see it at the grocery market, et cetera. I don't think we have to go in that and beat that dead horse today. Uh, the moves announced after a two-day policy meeting uh, will raise the central bank's benchmark federal funds rate to a target range between 0.75 and 0.1%, according to the Wall Street Journal. Uh, together, the steps mark the most aggressive Fed tightening of monetary policy at one meeting, of course, in decades, uh, aimed at rapidly reducing the economic stimulus that has contributed to rising prices pressures. Uh, of course, I, you can't just introduce $5 trillion of you know, money and, you know, printed money into the economy and not have there be some sort of issue. And of course, right now, they are still printing that money in our current administration and sending it all over. Stop printing money. Stop it. Okay, stop doing this. Uh, but they are. And the Fed now has to react to be able to, to you know, tighten that monetary Terry policy, take that currency out of circulation and put things back to normal. Uh, the Fed, which usually lifts interest rates in quarter percentage point increments, okay, last raised uh, the rates by half a point again back in May of 2000. So, I mean, if you've noticed over the last few years, of course, the, uh, the federal uh, funds rate have really kind of stayed between 0% and 0.25%. Okay, and now, of course, they have to get more aggressive with that. In fact, there's a lot of economists, uh, economists I'm sorry, from the last uh, monthly mortgage review that I did come out with uh, that really uh, said that we're behind the curve. Uh, they honestly think that the federal funds rate should be at around 5% right now. And honestly, is that a bad statement? Probably not. So the Fed, there's obviously some politics going in here to kind of keep things as low as it as they are right now. Uh, but the stance does need to be more aggressive. And now today you're seeing the Fed starting to get more aggressive about it. Uh, he started off his uh, press conference today, uh, Jerome Powell, stating uh, that combating very high inflation is job number one for the central bank. So he's aware of this, uh, according to him. And he says that inflation is much too high and we understand the hardship it's causing on everyday Americans. Uh, we're, we are moving expeditiously to bring it back down, he said. He adds that low and stable inflation is key for strong economic performance. And Mr. Powell said that the Fed has the tools to do the job. Of course, the, the target area for the Fed to where they would always like a comfortable inflation rate, as we've discussed in prior videos, is at 2%. Uh, we're way away from that. We're at 8.5%. And as we get later in this video, we'll realize that the next um, report that's going to come through is going to come in here in May, uh, coming up soon. He also said that there's a broad sense on the committee that an additional 50 basis point increases should be on the table at the next couple of meetings. So expect to have to, ha this to happen again. Uh, 
and noted that the American economy is very strong and well positioned to handle the tighter monetary policy. Well, Mr. Powell, I'm going to go ahead and disagree with you on that personally, because uh, I don't see the American economy very, being very strong with bo broken supply chains, and the list goes on and on and on, inflation rates, et cetera, et cetera. What say you? Please comment below. You know, let me know what you think, okay, about the current state of the American economy. Love to hear your opinions on that. Uh, so there are people that are, you know, again, like I said, economists that think that we're way behind the curve and uh, traders, again, are also not just betting uh, that they're going to do it just a couple of times in the next uh, couple of meetings. They're betting on a 50 basis point hike uh, for not only this one, uh, but e each of the next three meetings in June, July and September. But Powell said at the press conference that 50 base point increases are under consideration for only the two, like we said. However, he said, also said that a 75 basis point hike is not on the table as of now. He believes that a 75 basis point increase is not something we're actively considering. But again, what do we know? What are they really considering? If you're in these meetings, please let me know. Okay, but the Fed, it's always kind of a mystery. We don't have a crystal ball in terms of how they're really going to combat this. And you can see that they are getting a more aggressive when it comes to the federal funds rate. Uh, he would he went on to say that he says that he thinks <laughs> we have a good chance of still having a soft or softish landing or outcome, if you will. So that's yet to be determined. We'll just have to keep watching what they do over the next meetings until the end of the year and then the meetings that they have in the beginning of 2023. So what is the goal? The Fed's goal, of course, is to tamp down demand from consumers and businesses for goods and services by boosting the rates. And the thinking goes, it becomes more expensive to borrow money, to buy a home, car, or other needs, prompting some people to hold off on those purchases and, and have that drop in the demand, which could help tame inflation. Okay, so how does, we've been talking about the federal funds rate, and this is something that I have not talked you know, about in prior videos, but I think it's time to go ahead and discuss it and kind of break down what it really kind of is. So how does a federal funds rate work? I mean, the, basically the term rate refers to the target market interest rate set by the Federal Open Market Committee. Okay, these are these people that meet behind, you know, the closed door and discuss all this. The target rate is the rate at which the Fed suggests commercial banks borrow and lend their excess reserves to each other overnight. Uh, I'm not going to break this down into, you know, a lot of huge detail. Please go in there, do some research for yourself if you really kind of want to figure out how it goes. But how are these fund rates determined? And again, it's by their meetings. Uh, it's by the Open Market Committee uh, to meet eight times annually to determine the federal funds rate. And these funds rates are influenced, influenced now by economic indica indicators such as core inflation rate, okay, key there, core inflation rate, and the durable goods orders report, which provides signals about economic health of the country. Okay, we know, you know, GDP is not very good right now, which is uh, really kind of indicating a recession. Uh, it, please watch that video too. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, and I will have it at the end of this video to where you can go ahead and go back to the recessions video and understand, you know, how I feel that a recession is going to be on its way. Uh, right now, as I said, the federal funds rate uh, is sitting at uh, 0.25 to 0.50%, but that's going to change. And that will change in June. So, um, 0.5 to 1 or, or 0.75 to 1 is probably going to be the change uh, in the federal funds rate. And uh, by year end, though, uh, the federal funds rate very easily could reach 2% or higher, according to uh, LendingTree senior economic analyst uh, Jacob Channel. He is not the only one that thinks that. If you look at CNBC articles, Wall Street Journal articles, uh, pretty much any article, they're they are saying that the federal funds rate should hit 2% or higher. And then in 2023, they're saying that they could go, or early in 2023, it could go higher than that. So again, we just have to keep watching where the federal funds rate lands. So the question is, is how does the federal funds rate really kind of affect mortgage rates? Well, even though there's a lot of economists that say there's really kind of no correlation, okay? But if we kind of look at mortgage rates versus the federal funds rate, uh, all the way back since 1971, and we look at this graph, um, yeah, it kind of looks like, you know, there is some correlation here, okay? And so one affects the other. And usually the general rule of thumb from what I generally hear is that wherever the, you know, federal funds rate is at, 
uh, it's usually tacking on another three, you know, 4%, you know, into the 30 year fixed mortgage, but I'm not a mortgage person. I'm not going to touch that with a 20 foot pole. Uh, but they do have a sense of correlation to one another. So when the federal funds rate does increase, of course, the mortgage rates are going to go up with it, uh, along with a variety of other things. So, you know, short term, you know, uh, instead of the long terms. So either way, there is a correlation in between here. And if we kind of break it down over since 2000, uh, you can kind of see it play out too as well. But if we tail in here, uh, we can see that we have definitely uh, gotten past our federal funds rate of being at a flat line zero uh, since 2020, okay, or like kind of into 2020. Uh, and we can see the interest rates uh, going up along with that for the 30 year fixed. Okay, so what really, how does the interest rates, uh, you know, really kind of the hikes cost you, okay, in general? Uh, so in a, in a general rule of thumb here for every 0.25% increase, that equates to an extra $25 a year in interest for $10,000 in debt. So the 50 basis point increase that, they, that they're that they doing uh, or is will translate now into a $50 uh, of interest for every $10,000 in debt. Uh, however, economists, and here's the good news, don't expect the Fed to, or, or I'm sorry, not the good news, the bad news, uh, don't expect the Fed to stop raising rates after Wednesday's announcement. Again, economists are forecasting the Federal Reserve will direct another 50 basis points increase in June uh, with additional increases to follow later in, in 2022. So this is really out there to combat inflation. Okay, right now, uh, you know, plus the, the latter and our current inflation rate is sitting at 8.5%. And the next inflation update is scheduled for the release on May 11th at 8.30 a.m. EST. So this is Again, just going to let the Fed know how much more aggressive that they need to be. And a lot of economists are really kind of fighting back at them saying they are taking it too easy. So I uh, expect things to maybe be a little bit different as we move along. So let's talk about where uh, rates are at today. Okay, so currently for a 30-year fixed loan, we're looking at five, five and a half or just a little bit above five and a half, 15-year, 4.9. Uh, 30 year jumbo 5.12, uh, 30 year jumbo 4.71, and a 5 1 arm 4.65. Okay, and if we kind of look at this, uh, again, I kind of want to, you know, talk about how some people are scared about the inflate uh, the interest rates right now. They're like, wow, you know, they, they are going high. Okay, and they will continue to go up. We'll just have to see what settles out towards the end of 2022. But if we look back, uh, towards um, about 2018, okay, getting into 2019, we can see that, you know, the 30-year fixed loans here alone hit a 5% rate. Okay, so right now, buyers, if you're thinking that, you know, even at five and a half, uh, that's super high, well, of course, compared to the 3% that we had over that time, or within the threes and the fours, yeah, it's just adding more, adding more uh, money to your mortgage. And the general rule of thumb is that for every percent uh, that the interest rates do go up, it adds about 10% to your mortgages. But if you're kind of comparing it historically, we're still not sitting like relatively too bad, you know, especially if we're looking back from 2010 to when mortgage rates were at the fives, 2014s. Uh, the only difference here is that, of course, you are paying more for the house. Okay, and that's one thing I do want to mention is that home values separate of this are continuing to rise. And I do want you to watch Mikey's monthly market updates. So that way you can see what is happening in the home industry or the, the I'm sorry, yeah, the home industry as it pertains to supply and demand, because this is going to be a separate deal. Okay, so, but either way, are they super bad right now? No. Buyers, if you're on the fence, this is still a good time to get in before they continue to go up. Okay, so let's go ahead and cap off the tail end of this video and talk about the word recession. Now, I had a video that did come out about a couple of weeks back uh, that talked about recession trends and all that. And I just wanna go ahead and put this to bed because you may not watch that video. But if you think, if you're hoping that this recession, which all the green lights right now are saying that we are gonna about to go into a recession, uh, is going to tank the home industry uh, like we saw back in 2008. And again, the answer to that question is no. That was due to a variety of other reasons, mainly the subprime lending crisis, basically predatory lending 
and no regulation to it. So uh, again, if you if buyers, if you're out there, you're hoping that this current recession that's going to be popping up is going to go ahead and tank the home industry. No, it's not going to happen. Unfortunately, after the Great Recession, they did come out with the Frank Dodd Act, which is covered in that, which protects against that kind of predatory lending, which put us in that position in the first place. So again, do I see that happening? No. So I would like you to watch that video. I'm also going to tack on Mikey's monthly market update towards the end of this video too. Please watch that because that lets you know what's happening in the real estate market as it goes down to supply and demand right here in the Treasure Valley. So with this video, the, the mortgage, with the market updates, and with uh, the recession video, you're going to really kind of get a full picture on what to expect coming up. Uh, but there is some good uh, news at the end of the tunnel here uh, with this recession, because generally what kind of happens is that interest rates, you know, typically when they rise, they typically, uh, they, they force people to more or less kind of hold on to their money. Okay, they're not going out and buying goods and services and stuff like that. Uh, but when the recessions hit, the Fed knows that they have to kind of counteract that. They can't have a stale economy. They can't have everybody holding on to their money. They got to get things churning and moving. Okay, so the good thing is, is that when recessions hit, uh, and recessions are, of course, when, you know, we're not going out there and spending our money, stuff like that, okay, uh, they typically de decline during the recessions as loan demand slows. Uh, the bond prices rise and the central bank eases monetary policy. Uh, so interest rates are usually going to fall in a recession as the loan demand declines and investors seek safety. Uh, but in order to get you, you know, out of that and get you back into the economy, they know that they, they have to bring down the interest rates in order to get you back out there and feeling, you know, comfortable again about the economy and get the economy moving. So it's not going to stay stale. As to when that is going to happen, I honestly do not have a crystal ball. I mean, it could happen late 2022, early 2023. Uh, or maybe even, even into 2023, we're just going to have to keep our eye on inflation and as the Fed can stabilize this inflation rate. And if they can stabilize it, then yeah, they're going to start lowering the interest rates. So what does come up is going to have to come down. So buyers take a sigh of relief with that. But the other thing that you do have to consider is that as long as home supply is low and the demand is still high, you know, out here, that's still going to raise up the home value. So we're kind of in, you know, a situation at the moment. And right now is a great time to get in. Uh, get in while you can, because the interest rates are going to continue to go up currently. And so will the home prices. So reach out to me today. But let's go ahead and let's get into a lot of this in my final thoughts right after this. All right, everybody. Hey, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch that video. I hope that you found that uh, information useful. I know it's kind of on the long side, but there was a lot to talk about in terms of the Fed. But let's go ahead and let's summarize this. Let's break it down so that we're all on the same page before we end this video today. Of course, the Fed, they are getting more aggressive. They have to get more aggressive in order to combat uh, the inflation that we've got. A lot of economists are saying that they're taking it too easy. And you can see right now that they have to, they have to bend. Uh, a lot of the economists are saying still that the uh, the federal funds rate could hit about 2% or higher uh, towards the end of the year, which of course will bolster uh, the interest rates that it'll cost you overall in a home purchase. And uh, we do know that there is some relative correlation, you know, from the federal funds rate and how it portrays to uh, interest rates, you know, for 30 year fixed, 15 year fixed, et cetera. So buyers, this is what I want to tell you. Don't wait. Don't wait. I mean, still even at 5% or even at 5.5%, the interest rates are still good historically. So it's a time to get in there. Now, it, when you're talking about home prices, yes, but that is a whole nother ball game. And again, this recession that we've been talking about, which was at the latter end of this video, is not going to be that recession that's going to lead to the great recession that we saw in 2008. Again, for a variety of different reasons, primarily the subprime mortgage, mortgage crisis, which has been handled at this point. So anticipate still, since here in the Treasure Valley, we do still have a low inventory on the market with a high demand still coming in here. Uh, home prices are still going to go up. So that is another part of the equation. So I do invite you to watch all three videos, really kind of see how this all pieces together. But buyers, and these are the people I want to talk to the most, 
this is the time to go ahead and get in. And even if you get in now and say you're at five and a half, I do anticipate, okay, the interest rates to come back down, okay? And I think that they'll probably come back down relatively sooner than later. But again, I don't have a crystal ball with that. It all depends on how well the Fed can tame the inflation rate. But when they come back down and they come back down to a lower level, uh, you can go ahead and refinance at that point and get some ease on your overall mortgage payment. So buyer's still a good time to buy. Don't wait any longer for the interest rates to go up along with the home values to go up with it. So that's about uh, concluding this. Of course, if you do have any further questions or you're looking to buy, sell, or invest right here in the Treasure Valley, feel free to reach out to me. I can be reached at area code 208-715-STAR. Again, that's 208-715-7827. Of course, if you're looking to begin your shopping experience now too as well, feel free to visit my website at www.yourstarrealtor.com. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you go. Click on the notification bell. Also, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please comment below. Love to see what you think, the, especially the American economy, so how it's faring out, where you think inflation is going to land. Do you think the Fed can actually tame it? Love to hear it all. But in the meantime, thank you so much again for taking the time to watch this video. I look for the day, look forward to the day that we speak. I look forward to the day I call you my neighbor. God bless. Until then, bye-bye.